So, welcome to uh, Steve's Wood Cave. Um, I'm Steve, obviously, and um, I thought I would try and share some of my knowledge and some of the things that I've been taught. Um, before I go into that, I'll just say that I'm, I'm not a professional wood turner, and um, so some of the things I do may be a little bit different, but um, I've been taught by some, some very good turners over here in the UK and uh, maybe if I can share some of those learnings and, and experience that I've had over the past, I don't know, 15 years or so with you. So I know that some of you on Instagram have, have requested me to, to give you some turning lessons and um, of course there's plenty of um, turning lessons on the internet and obviously one-to-one uh, -one training is, is all also extremely valuable. Uh, this is a piece of spalted beech and um, it's a lovely piece of wood and we'll try and make a spinning top from it um, and I'll show you some of the things that, that I do. So before we, we crack on with that, um, I've got a small lathe here, it's, uh, I've made the lathe bench, it's something that you can find in Keith Rowley's uh, foundation course book. Um, it's a pretty it's got splayed legs so that the the lathe doesn't sort of take off and walk across the room when you start using it uh, however it is quite a small lathe so you know there are limitations on on the diameter of, of pieces of wood that you can can put on it um, it's very useful to have this it's uh, something I use a lot for for furniture making and um, also uh, ornamental stuff I'm sure you've seen some of my bowls and and other piece, bits and pieces. So it's not a great machine but it will do a job. Um, I particularly don't like the rest. It's really horrible. Um, I can't find any way really of, of improving it. Um, maybe one day when I've, I've got a lot of money I'll, I'll replace the machine. But anyway for the moment it, it does everything that I need. Um, so really what we've got here is we're going to put this between centres like so. The grain of the wood obviously is along the length of the wood. That's called spindle turning or between centres turning. You can do spindle turning just with the wood held in the headstock, which is the motor end of the lathe. Um, you would need um, a chuck system to hold it, but obviously a piece of wood this long is just going to wobble and fall off. So you have to start, if you're going to start with a piece of wood this long, you have to put it between centres, otherwise um, it's just going to fall off. Um, so this is the tailstock end, it moves along and it winds backwards and forwards. In the tailstock you have a, um, what do you call it, a, a life centre. And this life centre basically spins around, so when we make a hole in this end of the wood and put it in there, this spins with it. At this end we can drive it um, two different ways, um, well at least I, I've got two different options, um, I'm sure there are others. Uh, one is this um, four prong drive which gives a very good mechanical and firm grip on the end grain of the wood and, and rotates the wood. And this one is called a cone drive, it just has a, a cylindrical driving it's sort of got a slight angle on, on the in, inside of the hull, um, which is a very safe way of, of turning, and you might see some of, some of that later. But basically, at this stage, we just want to turn it to a cylinder, and the best way, because it's such a big piece of wood, um, we should use the prong drive, because that will give us the most mechanical um, grip. So if we put that in that end. Um, so, first of all we're going to turn it to a cylinder, and then once we've got it into a cylinder we can uh, cut part of it off, uh, like this one I made earlier, and then we can put that in a chuck system, if we make the diameter to fit this, this uh, adjustable chuck. This has like a, a stepped grip in there, and when we tighten it up that will hold it on the headstock here and we can just turn the spinning top. Okay, 
Right, so we, we've got the end of um, this, this block of beach <coughs> and we want to find the centre. It's roughly square, about two and a half inches square, 66 millimetres, it's about 400 millimetres long. There's several ways of doing this. We can just use one of these gadgets, which is a centre finder. And you just lay that across a corner using the, the 90 degree fence, draw a line, turn around to the next corner, adjacent corner, draw another line, and then somewhere you should have a crossing point, out there. Stick a hole in it with your awl, job done. It doesn't, doesn't have to be exact, as long as it's roughly in the centre. It will be, um, if it's not in the centre, it will be slightly out of balance, but you know, with this kind of diameter, it's not going to affect it too much. And when you're roughing it with the roughing gouge, which, which is the, the first step to take it to a cylinder, then um, it won't take more than a few seconds to sort that out. Another method of doing this is to just take a ruler, go from corner to corner. So, mark a line across there, mark a line across there. And then that will um, that will do a very similar thing. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, but if it's not exactly square, your piece of wood, then that's not going to work very well. So sometimes you have to do something else. An alternative method is to set a, a pair of calipers and putting one on the side face, scribe across like that, and just do the same on each side and set this so that it's just a bit more than halfway across the thing, so the wood, whoops. And you should end up with a small square in the middle into which you can make the center. So once again, it's not critical that it's exactly in the center, as long as it's somewhere close. So now we've got a hole in each end, the four prong drive, which I mentioned earlier, looks like this. Uh, four prongs, They've, it's got like a beveled teeth. Just put the centre point in your centre, give it a tap with a mallet or a hammer. That will set the, the teeth of the prongs of, of the prong drive into the end grain. That will then give you some reasonable mechanical gripping power. So now we've done that, you can put it in there. Tailstock, bring it up, tighten up the body of the tailstock so that it doesn't move, and then wind the live centre in to the other end. Now, because you've got a prong drive, you want to push the wood as hard in as you can, but not too much that it, you know. Right, so that's it now. <coughs> the rest gets positioned within about 10 millimeters of an edge. And we, we t because I don't have a long rest, I'm gonna to have to turn this to a cylinder in, in two halves, so. I'll do the tailstock end first. The roughing gouge um, has uh, an angle, a grind angle of about 45 degrees on the bevel. It's quite a thick tool, about an inch diameter, big piece of steel. You want to set the height of the, the rest just above centre, not much, or on centre. The, the tool has a thickness, so you've got to account for that. When we start to use it, we want to, to do what's called bevel rubbing. So before the actual cutting edge makes any cut, we put, push the handle down, right down, and just pull it up until you hear the, the bevel rub. And it'll be a dink, 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 dink. It's not gonna do any cutting, it's just gonna dink. And then to engage the, the cutting edge, you just pull the handle up, like so, not as much. You just pull up slightly. We start about an inch in from the end and go to the end. 
the tool rest protrudes past the end by about an inch so that the tool has some support. One of the first rules of, of wood turning is that you must have the tool on the rest at all times. It must be supported for the particular cutting point that you want to use of that tool. For this roughing gouge you can use the, the centre of it or you can use in, in the corner or you can use the flat edge as well. You can angle it and do sort of planing cuts like this. So it's quite a versatile tool but it's not for delicate work and that's why it's called a roughing gouge. My little lathe has speeds of 2000, 950 and 650. I'm going to use 950 initially just to rough it out. That's good enough for this two and a half inch diameter wood. And we'll stop when we get to the centre. So I'm going to start from an inch here, then two inches in to the right, three inches in from the left, go to the right, four inches in, go to the right. That's, that's how we're going to do it. Okay, so as I said, bevel rubbing, you hear that? Lift the handle. As you can see we've still got some quite big flats there, it's not cylindrical yet, so we've got a bit more work to do. Still not there. It's a bit like an octagon now. You can feel it when it's round, it's quite smooth all the way around as it cuts. Yep, looking at the end profile you can see it's round, you can feel it's round. Okay, so that's pretty much that part of it. Now we move down to the other end. Always turn it by hand just to check the edges of the wood don't hit the rest. And that you've maintained the same sort of distance. So now we're going from right to left. You want to start an inch in from the left hand side. Level rubbing. Engage by lifting the handle. Come in two inches or so. Same again. Come in three. Lights in the way.
There you go. Still some flat bits there. Now we could try and get this the same diameter all the way along. Um, it's much easier if you've got a rest that goes the full length of the wood. It's something I need to do at some point. Um, so there's a bit of a lump here, I can tell that's a bigger diameter roughly in the middle. But you could get your calipers and turn it to a fairly even diameter. It just takes a bit of practice. But now we've got it into roughly a cylinder, we're only going to use a small part of it, um, you know, one end or the other. Um, and I'm going to use the bandsaw to chop it off, it seems uh, easier than trying to part it off with a parting tool and the thing flying off in your hands. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> 